so till now we have studied the stop and wait protocol and you know what is the efficiency of stop and wait protocol we know what is the efficiency of stop and wait stop and wait ARQ its efficiency is TT upon TT plus 2 into TP TT upon TT plus 2 into TP now see we always want that we should get maximum efficiency for example, here in this case, in any system, if the system is efficient, then we can get the most out of that system. That means we can get most benefit out of that particular system. But the efficiency of stop and wait ARQ is TT upon TT plus 2 into TP. And if you analyze this particular efficiency, you can clearly see that if we need 100% efficiency, if we need 100% efficiency, then TT upon, it is TT plus 2 into TP, which should be equal to TT upon TT plus 2 into TP should be equal to 1, right? 100% is 100 divided by 100. So, to get 100% efficiency, we can say to get 100% efficiency, to get 100% efficiency, we can say TT is equal to TT plus 2 into TP. TT is equal to TT plus 2 into TP. When can you make out of, what can you make out of this particular expression? See, if for example, this is the sender, this is the receiver and here we take transmission time and this is this complete is propagation time and then again acknowledgement is sent so this complete is propagation time right so we uh, mostly we know that uh, this transmission time plus 2 into propagation time will always be less than transmission time it is less than this tt Right. So, to get 100% efficiency, it is necessary that this transmission time somehow, if we can make this transmission time to be equal to this much, that, that means sender should transmit the data until it get the acknowledgement, then we can see, we can assume that we are getting 100% efficiency or, or you can say that transmission time is so big, transmission time is so big than propagation time in such a way that this transmission time is e nearly equal to TT plus 2 into TP. So, if the transmission time is very big as compared to the propagation time, then this expression or this value can be ignored. This value can be ignored. But how big the transmission time should be? Because the transmission time, if you make a transmission time in such a way, then uh, we can clearly see we don't find a good limit. Right, so we need to find a limit of this, uh, how big the transmission time should be. Okay, so th this another way of analyzing the same thing, the, the other way is, you can see, we can get 100% efficiency if the sender will transmit the data, if the sender will transmit the data until it gets the acknowledgement, right. And the data is always transmitted in the form of packets. So, to get 100% efficiency, to get 100% efficiency to get 100 percent efficiency if we transmit tt plus 2 into tp upon tt packets if we transmit tt plus 2 into tp upon tt packets then we get 100 percent efficiency how we got this expression it is very simple to understand see see what is transmission time transmission time is time taken time taken to transmit time taken to transmit one packet transmission time is time taken to transmit one packet right and we have total time how much time we have total time which we have is tt plus 2 into tp for one packet we take tt time so or you can say in one second in one second so this is sometimes how many packets you can transmit you can easily find out out, out of this so uh, this is the transmission time that means for one packet it takes this much time so to transmit more number of packets for example if we say instead of this if we say this to transmit m packets to transmit m packets it is going to take m into tt time it is going to take m into tt time but here they are giving that you have total this much of time and for one packet it takes this much of time so in this total time how many packets you can transmit how many packets how many packets you can transmit you can transmit 
how many packets you can transmit in TT plus 2 into TP time. So one packet it takes TT time. So how many packets you can transmit is TT plus 2 into TP divided by TT. In this time, you can transmit these many packets. So this gives uh, this gives how many packets you can transmit to get 100% efficiency. And whatever this number will be, that will be called as window size. Whatever this number will be, it will be called as window size. Window size. What do I mean to say window size? Let me uh, explain it again. Let me elaborate it. See, to transmit one packet, to transmit one packet, it takes TT time. And we need to transmit, here you can clearly see, we need to transmit for total this much time. So we are going to transmit more than one packets continuously. We are going to transmit more than one packets continuously. So this total time is TT plus 2 into TP. Within this total time, we are going to transmit TT plus 2 into TP upon TT packets. Upon TT packets. So we are going to transmit these many packets within this particular time. Okay. So if you continuously transmit till this time then we can get 100% efficiency and whatever number of packets you are transmitting whatever this number is that is going to give you that is called as the window of packet window of packets that is the window of packets or you can say it is the window size it is a window size okay so this is, the, this is a way how we can improve the efficiency of stop and wait protocol how we can improve the efficiency of stop and wait protocol so this leads to the another protocol which we are going to propose to increase the efficiency and that particular protocol is called a sliding window protocol and the sliding window protocol is an upgrade, upgradation to stop and wait protocol so that we can increase the efficiency of stop and wait protocol and in the previous videos we have already discussed that in, in on what cases the stop and wait protocol is more beneficial stop and wait protocol is beneficial if we have uh, less distance that is the distance between the sender and the receiver is very small because in that case propagation time will be less so we discussed that uh, stop and wait protocol is better in case of lands stop and wait protocol is better in case if we have low bandwidth we in the previous video we already discussed if you have low bandwidth for example in a 2g network we have very low bandwidth so in that case it will be uh, better to use a stop and wait protocol and we discussed about the other criteria also now let us discuss about the next protocol which is a sliding window protocol and the sliding window protocol is based on the improvements which we proposed in terms of in stop and wait protocol so that we can improve the efficiency of stop and wait protocol okay